Hello everyone, it's Jen Shaw from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Hey guys, it's Emily from The Real Housewives of Orange County. It's the Marge, I'm dialing in. Hey everybody, Ebony K. Williams here, newbie. Hello everyone. Hi guys, it's Brandy Redmond from Dallas. What's up, it's Heather Gay from The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. 25,000, in case you didn't recognize me. Hi guys. Hello, Beret Troop. Welcome back. I'm the real Andy of Beverly Hills. Guys, welcome to another episode of this mini series that I'm doing about do all the fans think the same? And today we have a very special panel and we're going to be discussing everything about the real housewife of Dallas. We are right now on season five. It's starting 2016. And honestly, I still remember uh first time that i saw it because honestly i remember it, i think it came at the same time with potomac so everyone was like oh what is going there you know we have to uh, watch both and for some reason i actually connect more with dallas the beginning than potomac and then it went like this like during the whole seasons um i love dallas honestly i never been to dallas but i love these ladies and personally i have to say that this season for me it's very like one of the best ones because it's kind of like reminding us the old style of housewife which used to be like the lifestyles and the houses and the money and then they will also have drama but it was like the stupid drama that we like right and it will be like oh whatever they fight over like little stupid things and then they will made up and we will be like oh yeah the problems of the rich ones you know uh, it's not like that God throwing like I'm gonna destroy you and your mom and your dad and your husband and your kids and your dog drama. No, it's like very, very uh, light drama. And I'm, I'm actually I'm enjoying it and I think this season is amazing. So with that, let's start welcoming our panel today and let's start with the discussion, right? So first of all, we have newbie here. Hi, Peggy. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm just good, you know. <laughs> um, where are you calling from? Mississippi. 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 How are, how are things over there right now? Um, we have an ice storm going on right now. Oddly enough, they told us when we moved here there was never any snow, ice or anything. We have an ice storm. You oh, tell wow. me. It's freezing That's cold. Fun. It's <laughs> freezing cold here. <laughs> Yeah. My God, I can't, I can't, I can't enjoy it. Um, Peggy, who is your favorite housewife from Dallas? Cam. I absolutely love Cam. You know, I thought at the beginning she was going to be like very, of course, like blonde and dumb. But mm -hmm. now this, especially this season, I'm enjoying her so much. Like, I feel like she's finally like opening up, you know? And like yeah. being friends and drinking and having fun and yeah. I honestly also love camp. Yeah. Do you remember when they went to um, Thailand or wherever it was? That's what I was telling everybody else. And they went into all those strip clubs and stuff. And then she started doing those stick figures on the paper. She had me sold right there. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they yeah. told her where they took her to strip <laughs> through stick figures. It was like, okay, first they did this, and then there's another guy in front of him bend over this. Like I could watch that all day. <laughs> Totally, I love Cam. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's continue here. Let's welcome to the panel. Hello, Rachel. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Uh, much like Peggy, it's freezing here in Denver right now. So very cold, very cold for whatever reason. Right? I think I it's like, it's freezing oh, everywhere. I don't know. Side over here or something. My hair's going. Sorry. 
We normally have snow though, and we don't have any snow, just very blue skies and a lot of cold weather. So it's very, very odd. And we have ice and it's not supposed to be there, so. Wow. Okay, Rachel, who is your favorite housewife from Dallas? I agree with Peggy, I really love Cam, but I think the housewife who's grown on me the most from Dallas is Stephanie. I think that she went from being like just straight up, lack of a better way to put it, trophy housewife to, you know, someone who really has developed uh, themselves and their own character and uh, really, you know, into giving back. I love her whole program, wanting to build proper uh, locker rooms for kids, especially in high school. It's, it's, it's really neat. And I think that, that that says a lot about who she is because she doesn't have to do those things. I agree. Well, I also like that. You, you know, the thing is that I'm loving all of them this season. It's, I think it's the first time that I feel that like that in, in a long time. Well, I'm not loving all of them, so <laughs> so there's that. But yeah. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Let's welcome back SG. How are you? Good. How are you? You know, same old, same old. Yeah. How's everything up there? You sh you must be also freezing. Like she is like yeah. you're in the north to north. To, right? Well, I'm in Toronto, so it's pretty cold. Um, yeah, not really leaving the house. Everything is kind of locked down these days. I'm sitting on my floor. It's kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, who's your favorite housewife from Dallas? Is I really like Deandra. I think that she could win an Oscar. She's very <laughs> interesting to watch. Uh, she's so dramatic. And I love her mom. I just love the looks. Oh, everybody loves her mom. And yeah. she's, I mean, she's so sweet. I have been with her before. And like, she is so sweet, honestly. I love her. Like, I would say Tiffany because she's new, but. I don't know if I have to go through another franchise hearing that someone's a doctor every single episode, I might lose it. <laughs> like I get it. Like Wendy from <laughs> Potomac, like I get that you're a doctor. I don't need you to say it every single episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. Hello, Larja. Hey, how's it going, Andy? Good. How are you? Welcome for the first time. I know. I'm really excited to be here. I was so excited to get that email that said I could join. Tell me, um, where are you right now? California. Oh, you're in yeah, the neighborhood. Which part of California are you? Northern California up here in Sacramento. But I'm from the Bay. I'm born okay. and raised in the Bay. Yeah, and then we, oh. we moved it out to the central parts. Perfect. Okay, so who's your favorite housewife from Dallas? I am here for everything Tiffany Moon. I am here for everything Three yep. Moon Wine, her little moon twins, <laughs> her Daniel Moon husband, her Dr. Moon degrees, her doctor eating over cadavers. I love that she came barrels blazing, but in a nice, cute, so cute way. And like she just was, she had it for Brandy. She checked Brandy and then she moved on. That's what you were saying earlier about the fun drama. Yeah, just check them and keep it moving. I'm appreciating that about her already because some other ones are like a dog with a bone and I like that. I think her being like in the medical profession actually helps her let go sooner. You know what I mean? Cause she has to get over it and go to the next patient. So I'm loving Tiffany and I'm looking forward to seeing everything she brings. And you know, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Kanata, but uh, I love Ed hearing about educated women of any background, you know, and if they got a degree, flaunt it. I would like to see education even over lifestyle. However, I am enjoying the lifestyle aspect of this season also, like Andy was saying, we're getting back to glamour and 
all of that stuff. I like that, but also it has to be balanced. It can't, it's not all about aesthetics and looks. You got to be smart. You got to have heart. And I like that she's bringing that. I agree with you. I'm joined, I'm joined Tiffany, but the only thing is that the other day she went into an interview and said that she wasn't even sure that she will be back for a second season. And we are not even in episode like four or five. So I'm like, oh, do I want to get invested on her storyline if she's not going to be back? Like, I think that she should have like wait a little bit longer before saying that statement because now a lot of fans are like, mm, should I really get invested of you if you're just going to leave us? for next season, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but you know, it's all TV. So it's just gonna entertain <laughs> me this yeah. season or next season if she comes back. I'm still looking forward to see what she can bring. Exactly. All right, let's move on. Let's welcome also for the first time, hello, Jace. Hey, Andy, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. And thank who's you. next to you? Because I, I I didn't get your name. This is my beautiful mom, Lana. She's like my housewives watch buddy. She's like my wing woman. <laughs> <Lana>. <laughs> Listen, oh, nice to meet you, Lana. She taught me to watch housewives. Like that was instead of cartoons, we watched housewives. <laughs> that was basically it. <laughs> well, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Housewife is life. <laughs> Where are you right now, Jace? We are actually in Dallas, so it's kind of convenient. You are in Dallas. Yes. And born and raised in Dallas, so you have all the inside. I have all the inside scoop, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> He's friends with them all. He should. <laughs> Just a couple. <laughs> Not all of them for a reason. <laughs> right. I mean, for example, Okay, you have to tell us. You have to tell us who you know and which one is your favorite. <laughs> okay, so actually, the one I don't really know that well is my favorite, but I know Tiffany pretty well. Her and I used to go jogging together and stuff. Uh, Deandra's been to my house a couple of times, probably four or five times. Um, I ran into Carrie a few times when they were doing the trunk shows, but actually, our personal favorite is Stephanie. Stephanie, yeah, she's just precious and honest and yeah. just a adorable she's blunt but like in a funny way I and very say funny she's kind of like the spongebob of housewives like she's just gonna make you laugh and you know it especially <laughs> those panties remember yeah. those panties that is just cracks me oh up. my god yeah <laughs> stephanie's and i i mean i've seen her like once or twice in person out and about but i've never really talked to her face to face but she's definitely my favorite to watch uh. I love Stephanie yeah. and the friendship with Brandy uh, that season that they were fighting. I was like, oh, no, please don't go this way. Like, please just keep your friendship together. Yeah. And they kind of come as a duo also. Like they really, you know, I don't like see them separating. It's like a Batman and Ron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Really All right. Like and last but not least, let's join Mr. Storm. How Hello. are you? Good, how are you? How's everything in Georgia? It's actually, hey, to tell you, it's actually pretty nice here today, like in Southern Georgia by the coast. Like I'm in shorts today, so not too, too bad. Um, hopefully it stays that way though, so. I know. Okay, let me know, who is your favorite housewife from Dallas? My favorite would have to be like, so far this season, I'm, I've watched from the beginning. I'm really loving Tiffany, but if we're saying from OG, like definitely Stephanie, we've seen her arc, we've seen growth, we've seen layers. Um, and I also love Cameron because I also have two Pomeranians. So the fact she's got fancy on that treadmill, I really wanna know how they did that, what training techniques they used, because I could so use that technique for mine. <laughs> I love Cameron. I, mean, I don't know, Cameron, like yeah, I said, she just, she just, she's bringing it like with the funny parts this, this year. She is. Oh, really she is. And I think she's lightened up a lot this season. Mm-hmm. Agree. All right, guys. So let's start with this panel. You know the drill. 
mute yourself, guys, right now. I'm going to do the first question. Whoever agrees with the statement or the question, um, go first, okay? And, I mean, just start talking, and then the disagrees. And to who, uh, all you guys who are watching us live, please leave your answers on, you know, on the comments, all right? So the first one, actually, more than a statement, is uh, that a question is actually, like, um, what do you guys thought about this? Let's see. Okay, the first one is, what was my first impression of the show when it started or it aired five years ago? So who wants to go first? So my first impression, what I loved about Dallas before it even came out was that was when Bravo was giving us these big trailers for these shows. And they had like the old rig and they were all walking and it was just like an, a big production for the promo itself. So that initially got me super excited because like when I think of Texas, I think of oil, I think of like everything's bigger in Texas and they really gave me that in the promo and season one, I, I've i actually met several people from Dallas in the Plano area that have I went to school with and they've talked about like how big charity is there and just all these different things that we've been able to see. And so far I've really enjoyed it. I think it's delivered characters to us and definitely I have seen them getting better, especially with the addition of Tiffany. So I really like, and with Carrie, they've been bringing it in diversity. So I really like that factor. I think it's been a well-rounded show and it, yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> Next one. I'll go. <laughs> you want me to go or somebody else? Um, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, Peggy, that was it? Just Yeah, what? I agree with him actually, kind of, in a way. I think the first season was a lot of them were kind of intimidated, I think, to show their real personalities because of their society. They kept saying, I can't do that because, you know, in our society, that's frowned upon. And Cam especially, you know, that's all you heard from her when she first came on is, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. But as the time went, they all eventually opened up and they all start showing. Unfortunately, I don't think some favorites <laughs> are going to make it through their first year this year because I don't think you can mix being a doctor and being on that show and being feisty and willing to say and do things and then turn around and go to the hospital and expect your patients to be like, wait a minute, didn't I just see you get drunk and jump in a pool naked? Like, it's just not going to go well with her. I think she's extremely intelligent, but I just don't see her making it past the year with her job. But Cam have went from, you know, I can't do that, I can't do that, and now look at her. Like, she's just out there drinking and having a blast. So I think everybody goes through that their first season on the show, but I just think it got a lot better this year. I think slowly it gets better, but the first season I thought was great. But I think the first season was really like, good. Um, and I think, like, Leanne kind of, like, even – she ended up being what she was like she brought this huge like the whole charity war which what i mean we didn't have that charity intense in any other franchise so i think she brought that and then all of the other ladies were like very careful on how they wanted to be portrayed because then if you look bad then your charity she, she used to say like your charity image is down the drain or something like that so all of them were like very, very careful of how are they gonna be portrayed until Bravo wore their magic and they're like, okay, you just have to move on, honestly. <laughs> I yeah, agree with Andy. No, I love with her, hate her. Lock, that, that girl there, uh, what's her name there, left? What was her name that you were just talking Leanne. about? Left the show? Leanne. 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 Yeah, they had her leave, but truth is, she carried that show for the first couple of years. I mean, they were all too scared to show their true colors and she's the one that kept it going and she's the one that pushed their buttons and made them come out of there so everybody should praise her and want her back she's great tv <laughs> i disagree i feel like with leanne gone it's as if like this negative energy kind of has left the show and it's a bit more like 
there's more room for the other characters to grow. I'm not trying to minimize, you know, her past traumas or anything, but she kind of used it, used it as a weapon, and I was getting kind of sick of that. I agree. When the first when the show first started, I actually didn't watch it because when I saw the previews and the big trailer, I was like, I don't want anything to do with this show, and I wanted being sick its third year and binging it while sick in bed for like three days and I fell in love with Leanne, but her last season was just awful. Like I agree, she weaponized, for lack of a better way to put that, her past trauma to, yeah, to better herself. But initially I really wasn't that into it five years ago. I was like, I don't, we don't need Dallas. This is ridiculous. I don't want Dallas. And it's it's also. Well, I liked um, that they were introducing a new franchise. But I also didn't really, I watched like the first episode and I was like, oh, okay. And it was interesting with the whole, like Leanne being from the Carney, but being head of society in Dallas, that was so weird to me, but interesting, you know, but it didn't interest me enough to keep watching until quarantine when I got to catch up on a lot of things I previously wasn't interested in. And so, um, but when I saw how they got rid of Leanne, noticing her energy being gone, that whole negative thing being gone, almost kind of like, well, I love Nene Leakes, but she was a lot to handle sometimes. And without her presence, other people could shine unabashedly. Like they didn't have to like answer to the HBIC, so to speak, you know what I mean? So I can appreciate her being gone, but I also did appreciate the drama that she would bring, but she was like just so full of lies too. I mean, just be real. It's reality TV. Be real. No, re- never mind. Change my mind right now. Glad she's gone. Stay gone. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> Jay? So, I mean, of course, we were excited about Dallas first season because we live here. Um, we were excited to see places that we go to, we shop at, we you know yeah. eat. And so that's really cool to see places that we go to quite often. Um, also, one thing about Dallas that I've learned as I travel and stuff is that the people in Dallas probably spend more money than some folks in Beverly Hills, to be honest. Like, if you make 500 grand a year, you're going to spend $499,000 <laughs> that year. So, I mean, in Dallas, like, it, it's fun because that's why we watch the show. I mean, at every red light in Dallas, there's a Rolls Royce, you know, just parked right there at the light. And it's very flashy. It's very in your face. It's um, new money. Like y'all said, it's oil. Um, but in regards to Leanne, I will say, however, she got on my absolute nerves sometimes. I'm out the carnival and this and that. But y'all have to give her this. With Dallas society, like it's a hard society to even claim and join. But this woman came from nothing and she ruled Dallas society. Whereas like with Deandra and Carrie and in some circumstances, um, Stephanie and Tiffany, they like either were born into it or married into it. Whereas Leanne had no association and absolutely just joined in the Dallas society and not only just joined, she like took it over and rolled it. I think yeah. that's kind of cool. I mean, she was absolutely annoying for a little bit. Um, she's not as bad as what she thinks she is because I'm pretty sure she's come at me personally on Instagram under yes. a fake username. Yeah. Um, oh. so. <laughs> but it is, and it's very much about, we're very much about community and making our community better. And she just really rocks that lifestyle she really about, does. you know, helping out the, you know, the underprivileged and, and we really are about community and, and wanting to build each other up and, and help people. And, and Leanne rock that. She did. She definitely paved the way for Dallas Housewives. I will give her that, even though she gets my nerves. She did yeah. pave the way. But she does. Yeah, I mean, she you do have to agree that Leanne was the, the, you know, the TV goal from Dallas. You know, like she was like the big key or like, you know, the even, well, no, I don't want to compare her with Lisa Vanderpump, but, you know, she was like the anchor of the show for like, uh, the beginning and i actually even she was crazy sometimes i like you guys said i enjoy her and i was like oh this is the drama we're gonna have fun with her but last season she just went out of the rail completely you know and we will be talking about you know what happened with her later but 
I it it completely threw me out. I was like, I didn't expect that side from her, you know. Uh, if she wouldn't have done that, maybe like she will have a lot to you know explore and still be part of the show. And maybe she just got a little too full of herself. Probably, yep. All right, guys, mute yourself. Let's move on to question number two, all right? Okay, next one is... Uh, wait, what is it? Real Housewife of Dallas do a good job representing Dallas. So, I don't know. Let's start with Jace because you are from Dallas. So, do you think <laughs> that... <laughs> Real Housewives of Dallas do a good job representing your city. They really do. I, I agree. Because uh, Dallas is um, it's very unique and diverse. And like you have people like Tiffany that are working people that are immigrants. And then you have people like DeAndre, you know, that were born and raised here and kind of born into the, into the society. And then you have people like Leanne that were born here, but at the bottom of the totem pole and just kind of worked their way up. So yeah, I think that I think it yeah. does. And like how Stephanie's from Oklahoma, just a country girl, you know, and now she's got her own office. <laughs> yeah, she finally got her own office. But yes, they do a very good job. All right. What about outsiders? What do you think? <laughs> A couple of people that I went to school with that were from Plano and Dallas area, when I, especially when I got to meet their families, when they would come to visit, I felt like they were what I pictured. Very wholesome, all together, like oil. And I mean, they just, like they said, they, the girls I knew, they were very flashy and they loved labels. And I mean, they were the girls that did love to shop a lot. So, I mean, I totally agree with that. I think Dallas, there is so much more glam after there that sometimes even will surpass Beverly Hills. And if they would highlight some of that stuff more, I definitely think they could get more people tuning in. Cause I definitely think that diversity factor is like making its way into there. And so bringing the glam aspect with it too. And I think that's the recipe and the flow they should keep going. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I don't and one know last if thing. anyone has made. Oh, sorry, Exie. And it's I heard a rumor that Claudia Jordan moved to Dallas. And if she did, she did. I think she would be great. So actually, she came one, yeah, one night I was having a watch party and Deandra texted me and she was like, hey, I'm bringing a special guest. And I said, she's like, can I bring him? And I said, absolutely. I'm like, oh, she's gonna bring Mama D or something silly, you know, whatever. And all of a sudden, here comes this yellow, like, pea coat, <laughs> like, <laughs> pantsuit thing. And I'm like, I opened the door and it was Claudia Jordan. And I mean, that was iconic. But yeah, she lives in Dallas. Um, I think she interviewed actually to join Real Housewives of Dallas. I don't know what all happened with that. Um, yeah. yeah, she, See, she could Dallas. read. And I really enjoyed her. <laughs> she can. Yeah. She, she's really cool in person. I, I love Claudia. She was impressed by the peacock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I would they're working say on being more diverse. So that's always good for any cast. And um, that now they're starting to reflect like what I imagine Dallas to be, because I'm not from there, obviously. But, um, you know, I know that. Dallas, like any place in the country, could be could be represented with diversity, you know. So I'm glad they're addressing that this season. I love Carrie. I love her tequila, and um, also I don't know. I heard Claudia Jordan interview too. She talked about it on her show before, mm -hmm. um, but she didn't. I don't think it went anywhere. But that would be interesting if they brought somebody like her. But I don't know that she has the lifestyle to match the other ladies. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like they would have to I don't think, for all the I mean, when you talk about lifestyle, what are you saying? Like, what do they drive? Where do they live or? Right. Well, I don't think Leanne did either, but she ruled the show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, truthfully, I, I think Claudia would do a great job. The only connection she had was Deandra. And yeah. from what I understand is um, production wasn't too interested. That, that's all I know. So mm -hmm. I, I was really hoping to see her. I know like they're interviewing Tiffany 
Um, they're interviewing another lady up in Frisco, and um, so and then Claudia. But the I, lady I in Frisco was that the lady that has the pig? Oh, that's Frisco Barbie. That's Kathy. Yes. Yeah. But they also uh, so they interviewed Kathy, and then they also interviewed my friend Kim Starr. So uh, okay. Kathy and Kim are pretty close because they uh, both have NASCAR racing husbands. <laughs> oh, hello. But, but yeah, so, um, but yeah, Claudia didn't make the cut, unfortunately. I didn't have a little enough bit of drama. Drama. Yeah. <laughs> so I can barely hear you guys with our storm going on here. I'm getting like hurts, <laughs> just so everybody knows. Sorry. So I've never been to Sorry. Dallas, but what right, I'd guys. like to know is how much um if i was to have a garage sale if i'd make twenty four thousand dollars no like no. is that normal <laughs> no. <laughs> no and technically cameron doesn't live in dallas like it's highland park like they don't claim the peasants in dallas or preston hollow oh, okay. or whatever it's highland park it's act and it actually is a town of itself with their own police department and all that wow so, yeah that's funny oh, okay. yeah. that's Ridiculous. <laughs> my kind of yard sale. I want to have one of those. Like, can I sell my shit for four thousand dollars and somebody buy? <laughs> like, that is fantastic. <laughs> she did good. That was excellent. I, know. I think she sold it. All right, guys. She say like she. Mm -hmm. She said she made a lot of money off that yard sale. Yeah. I'll bring my shit there and put it yeah, in the did. yard. Okay, guys, mute yourself, mute yourself. Let's go to the next question, which is something that you guys are already talking about. And it is um, Real Housewife of Dallas is it, doing a good job showing diversity in the show. Like I say, yeah, definitely. I think so. Um, as a brown skinned girl, of course, I'd like to see the color brown sometimes, but it doesn't have to be the definite color of brown, but the, you know, diversity is diversity. And so, and I'm glad that then they addressed that whole thing with Leanne, like right in time and didn't let it drag out season after season. So that showed, and then um, that showed that they're like conscious, you know, of the tone of today. And I appreciate Stephanie's outlook on things. She's so, she's, she's really a tender-hearted lady and she, she's like this is what we're arguing about like really you know so i like her a lot and i think that having those type of people on their cast is going to encourage more diversity you know maybe we will eventually see a brown skinned girl but um because i got a cousin that lives out there <laughs> Well, and with um, Dallas, what was interesting this season, though, was uh, when Carrie, uh, uh, she's been on my nerves, she kind of tried to play the race card when she was getting proved wrong by Tiffany. And she goes, is it because I'm Mexican? And Tiffany goes, is yeah. it from Chinese? And just shut her down. And, and that That's was great. Why I and because, I mean, it's we're all getting beat with it, you know, watching the news and getting on Facebook and Instagram. We don't want to see it in our free time on a show that we enjoy. And so I think Tiffany did great, which is shutting it down. But as far as Dallas diversity, I mean, Dallas is. It's well, a melting pot. I mean, it's one of the most diverse areas, though. I mean, you have people from all over the world that come here for a job. You know, they come here for work. And um, so, yeah, I, Dallas has done a great job on the show and in real life being diverse. I, I love Tiffany. I think she's done a great job of bringing something different and special. I'm from the Bay Area as well, so like I'm, I love seeing that in Dallas and, and that kind of culture in Dallas. I know that you all said that you all love Carrie. I, I don't particularly care for Carrie, um, but that's personal. <laughs> like it's not about you know her bringing tequila and fun to the show. I just think she, you know she's she's got a lot, but. Um, I think it's awesome that they're they're doing it, and they're, I think they're doing it faster than other housewives have, the shows have, and they've done it more naturally. Where I think right. like Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they force that. Um, right. Although I love Garcelle, so don't like get that wrong at all. But I just don't know if that was the right fit at that time right. because they wanted to make that happen where this kind of naturally and organically did. Right, I agree, and I mean vice versa. Like on Housewives of Potomac, they could bring in diversity there too. Not sure how that could look. You know what I mean? Um, but I used to live in Potomac too. There's lots of, there's everywhere, everywhere. Just, I think maybe 
but you're right. How they add them. Garcelle was not a natural introduction. That was kind of mm -hmm. like flop. You know what I mean? And we loved her because she was fancy and yes. everything with Jamie Foxx. But she didn't have any connection to those ladies. You yeah, know? Plus she worked so much. Like she had other things to do. <laughs> other, she was not, um, you know, how's yeah. I think it was classy for Tiffany to accept Brandy's apology so quickly. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I think that Brandy shouldn't have gotten away with that. I don't know. Seeing how Bravo has treated people from other franchises for doing things of similar, uh, Magnitude. Which it was bad, but Magnitude. it was. I don't know. I, I feel like maybe she should have gotten more for it or like gotten canceled. If Stassi could get canceled, I feel like maybe Brandy should have also been canceled. That's just my opinion. Yeah, that would have been an easy one. That would have been easy, especially since she pulled the chair out for Leanne at the last reunion. Yeah, but remember what I said earlier, though, was <laughs> Stephanie and Brandy are a dynamic duo. I mean, we're not yeah. going to have Stephanie without Brandy. Well, and I think yeah. that um, Brandy did it, you know, as un, uh, you know, uncultured as it is, it was in jest, whereas Leanne does it to be mean. Malicious, absolutely. Very malicious. Yeah, no. And Brandy did, you know, make a mistake, but she just thought she was being funny. And, you know, we've all had the foot and mouth disease, and uh, but where it comes to Leanne, she does it maliciously. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, and it was more repeated. Like there were so many. And wasn't that? that and that, wasn't that, was that an old video too of Brandy? Yeah, it yes. was. It was kind of old. And actually, the person that leaked it was Leanne's wedding planner. I kind of found. That's that what I heard. That it was so much from really? her camp. Yeah. 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 And see, I feel like it that was done at a complete what's, retaliation. What's bad though? It, it was an Instagram story, so that means he had to literally screen record it. And save it for doing for years, day. like for, for years, right yeah, yeah, for years. Absolutely. So I think it's they crazy. need a poor full time job. That's ridiculous. Yeah, get a real job. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on to the next question. Mute yourselves. I love that our conversation is actually going on the same way that the questions are going because the next question is actually. Leanne Locking deserved to be fired. Yes. Yes. Yes, because it was mean spirited. There was nothing kind about that. It yeah, if we're going so off that, it was I'm malicious. Yeah, I mean, just right. absolutely malicious. Uh, yeah, I don't agree. And not to mention that she had used her ignorant card, her I'm abused card, her, like she used all the cards she could have possibly used to justify saying that over and over with such venom, you know what I mean? And it was all gone. And then she didn't, you could feel that she was not sincere, but she, she was, was embarrassed. She yeah. was embarrassed, right. Mm -hmm. She was scared she got caught, that was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, through the many layers of makeup at the reunion, you could literally see her blushing. I mean, really, you could, she was embarrassed. Very embarrassed. Whatever, she married the love of her life, so who cares? <laughs> if she's not on the show anymore. <laughs> well, my only thing with Leanne is she made great TV. Um, I do know personally that she was actually looking at buying a larger house to live in for the show, just for appearance-wise. Um, she really didn't think she was going to get fired for a little bit. And... Um, it's kind of sad because she is a Dallas staple. I mean, she's paved a great way for housewives in Dallas. And um, I don't know. I mean, she's definitely, you know, not a racist or anything. But like y'all said, she's just absolutely ignorant. Right. And we all have ignorance in us. And mm -hmm. also, not in that certain category, but in a sense, we do like to watch the ignorance. But one thing I was kind of hoping for, and maybe it'll be next season. I, I don't know. Um, I really hope we get to see Leanne grow from it. That's kind of what I was wanting to see was Leanne grow from 
the ignorance and the mistake that she made. And unfortunately we didn't get to, like they just left her off on the worst note possible. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't like that. I mean, I would have rather them give her a crappy storyline this season and then fire her. But, but let me let me ask you something. Don't you think that all the last seasons, three seasons before that, she was given the chance to grow as a person on screen. And in her last season, she chose to be vile to everybody. And I'm a huge fan of hers the first three seasons. So don't get me right. wrong. I loved her. That last season, like the whole thing with the elephants, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I like it was agree. too much. It was too, yeah, yeah. she went too far, somewhere weird and dark, and, and she should deal with that, not on national TV. Well, yeah, she's I, think that her, do that. I think her disconnect with m basically all the ladies that she filmed with was just the lifestyle that she grew up in mm -hmm. and um, where she's coming from. And she just didn't have all the opportunities like the other ladies. So she's coming from a whole other world. And so... I guess she just couldn't relate as much sometimes. And I think uh, yeah. she tried. I mean, she's really like a, a great LGBT supporter and just she, really, she is really supports that community. Um, but she just, I don't know, couldn't yeah. she, she pass that? She tried too hard to fit in, I think. And I think that's what went wrong with her. She tried too hard to fit in with the society ladies that were born into it or married into it. And whereas she just ended it. And I also honestly believe she and Carrie just didn't like each other. It had nothing to Correct. do with I anything think, else aside from personality. Cause I mean, yeah, I don't care. I think Carrie's so I jealous it. of her. If and I think <laughs> it's hard to, for anybody to like no, Carrie. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think, I mean, I, I've told my mom constantly <laughs> I enjoy Carrie. Like I like her. I've been around her a few times and I don't mean this in any harm. Well, I guess I do, but I think she started the jewelry business and she's hoping it'll take off so she can leave her husband. That's it my like that way. I yeah. agree. That's it it comes off that way. <laughs> of Leanne because Leanne has a higher status than Carrie mm -hmm. and Leanne didn't have to marry somebody to get that status. Right. She's manifesting right. her husband, leaving her for a 32 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and I see Leanne every single time and I watch Miss Congeniality. That's old and down. I always spot her. That's when we trade them in. <laughs> Here's what I don't understand about Carrie. She's always, she's constantly complaining about not having any property or money or anything. Like, just go change that. You, you're wow. a real housewife. Go figure that out. You make X right. amount of episode. Go put a down payment on a house and go go pay some mortgage. Pull the trigger. Yeah. 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 Do it. Like, you're scared. Make it happen. Poop or get off the pot. Exactly. <laughs> Love it. She also does right, that guys, thing when she cries that nobody talks to her. Like you don't ask about me. She did that to Leanne last season. Yeah. You're, you never ask about me. You're not interested in me. And now she's starting that with um, Deandra this season. But Carrie, about how you're not but Carrie did me. say that De not not Carrie. Uh, Cam did say that Deandra did never ask about people. Like she doesn't ask. Yeah, about yeah. yeah. Cam did say that's true. <laughs> you know. yeah. All right, guys, mute yourself. Let's go to the next question. Stephanie Holman and Bradley Redmond are reality TV friendship goals. I yes. personally love their friendship, but if we're talking like from casting perspective, I definitely think Stephanie's the star of that duo. And I personally would not mind if she was just the housewife and Brandy was made a friend of, and they brought in another lady. Oh, that's just my personal that opinion. Could work. Because okay. you would still have those fun scenes together. It would be more controlled. She's about to have more kids. So her hands are going to be so full. She doesn't have a nanny that I know of. So she is very hands-on. And that's just one thing I've thought here and there. But I mean, I do enjoy Brandy and Stephanie's friendship. I like, they're always there for each other. Like you said, Andy, the season, they did not get along at first. I hated it. I wanted them to get back together. And I felt like a lot of people were rooting for that too. So I definitely, of, of the Housewife franchises, I think they have one of the most solid friendships. Well, and I'm afraid that it's gonna end up being like Kyle and Lisa Vanderpump. Like for oh, many, I, many uh, years, they I'll have these. No. Uh, no, no, what's and interesting, then, you know, 
what's interesting <laughs> too is um seeing their friendship it's just it's a little different for us seeing it because brandy's up in plano like she lives right. probably 30 40 minutes away from these ladies right and um stephanie's right in turtle creek which is basically in highland park in cam and deandra's neighborhood and so what's interesting about it is that they intertwine and that typically doesn't happen like you kind of stick with your neighborhood and this and that like you don't go outside and make friends with other people like that's dallas and um so that's kind of interesting about their friendship i i mean i don't think they would ever stop being friends or whatever but i mean they're definitely goals i think they're very good friends and yeah. true friends and <laughs> but i i kind of agree she could just be you know a a, a visitor every you now can and tell, then. you can tell brandy doesn't fit in and right. I think she doesn't fit in. If you look at the birthday parties, look at uh, Carrie's birthday party and how extravagant it was. Right. And then you kind of look at Brandy's and it was just, you know, in grapevine and stuff. It wasn't very... Well, and, and they're pandemic. going on a trip for Carrie now, right? Like they're going on a yeah. trip for her. And they just kind of dismissed Brandy's birthday. And you, right. that, <laughs> that's the Highland Park coming out in those women. They don't really care about the Plano girl. And... Right. So, yeah, but she's definitely an outsider. I think that yeah, Stephanie would, would be just fine on her own without Brandy as well. I don't, oh, I think, I don't even yeah. think she needs to be a friend. I think we should if just she like, would move do on. It. I don't know if she would do it on her own. See, that's what I wonder too, especially with their podcast, because I do listen to it. They are so tight. Yeah. So, but I personally, I would love to know what's going on with Carrie Duber. Oh, right? I always liked her. She's doing really good. I mean, she actually lives right down the road from uh, Tiffany in Preston Hollow. And I I've ran into her a few times out in public. And, I mean, she seems fine. I think she was upset that she was fired, in a sense. I don't think she wanted to leave. I would be, too. She definitely enjoyed the show. But, yeah. She I thought she was her husband. It. Should it her husband? Yeah. He liked being on the show. Uh, yeah. uh, more than her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more than she did. I'm pretty sure he <laughs> dug it quite a bit. I have reservations <laughs> about the husband. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Oh. No, oh, but that. did you see her weird like Instagram poses, like yes. showing off her abs? Very odd. Yeah. <laughs> Great marketing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Mute yourself. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> is will real housewife of dallas be as successful as other franchises i'm talking like new york beverly hills no <laughs> no Why? i don't think so. who's the star of it Dan. does it have a star deandra no deandra yeah. is the root of like a she lot really of those things yeah, I, I don't think there would be a Real Housewives of Dallas without Deandra. Well, she I was mean, not the first season. Or her shawl. But they did reach out to her first season, and she declined it. It took Leanne well, talking to Mama D to get that. And that's because of Deandra's last name. A Simmons' yeah. name is a very big name in Highland Park. Yeah. And, I mean, they're very, very, very prim and proper. And, like, I mean, as y'all see with Mama D. And I from what I understand is they've been shunned by part of their family just for even being on the show. Right. So. Oh. I do, but I don't think Deandra can go on, you know, watch what happens live and pull in the kind of people that a Vanderpump can, mm -hmm. that a Vicky Gundelson can, that they, she doesn't have that. She, first of all, I love watching her, so don't get me wrong, but I just don't think she has that presence to transcend beyond her show and that's what these other women have is the ability to go other places and bring people in but that's kind of dallas dallas stays yeah. in dallas like, we really do and and y'all are bringing a different outlook than we are you know like i know deandra personally and so it's kind of hard for me to say anything bad because <laughs> I, I, mean, I when you see, i love that woman to death i mean she's so down to earth and awesome um, you see her at central market or whole Foods, she's gonna stop and talk to you yeah and like she had talked about in a uh, podcast she was saying you know people come up and want to take pictures with me and stuff and she's like i don't mind at all because that's what i've worked for my entire life so like that's a reward um, she's definitely probably the most genuine, but 
Um, as far as it being as successful as like Atlanta or New York or Beverly Hills, it's I, not I, enough drama. No, I I think Beverly Hills has sucked absolutely. I I don't even think it's a season of it ever. And um, I think with Dallas, it, it's really blamed on the production. I, I yeah. don't think they've given enough credit. I don't think they've given enough funding. And you know, Dallas before uh, Salt Lake City was the only franchise that had to fly to New York yeah. for the reunion. reunion. Yeah, and so Andy Cohen just instantly threw Dallas in the gutter. And I know that, I mean, I have a little different of an outlook than than everybody here, but uh, Bravo really didn't give Dallas a chance. And that's my opinion. I think they could be just as successful, if not more, if they received the right funding and the credit. And on the whole reunion thing, I think it, there are tons of places in Dallas they could find yeah. that. that would be gorgeous. They could do it at South Fork. I mean, if you want oh to like God, really yeah. outside at South Fork, how no, uh, how iconic would that be? My I cousin know. got married at South Fork. Look at Tiffany Moon's house. I mean, it's big enough. Oh my God. In her closet. Absolutely. In her closet. Just her closet. As far as success, yeah. I don't know. That amazing. That the reunion just on the closet. Successful yet, then we should have all the women in their closets and their virtual. I'm sorry, I just went that was a really weird thing. We're gonna do another virtual one. Every woman has to take it from her closet, and then Nini has to be there because I still want to see that closet. Right. No, yeah. no, somebody up. Yeah, there'll be no one in that closet. <laughs> all right, guys, let's move on. So, mute yourself. Almost done. Next question is going to be what is okay. Brandy Redman should have been fired or demoted over her comments and, or her video. Yes. Demoted at least, in my opinion. Can I ask why? I think you do have maybe like demoted. No. And, but I no, also think that we are a little bit first five episodes, we have been seeing less of Brandy than the usual. I don't know if that's... I think that is a demotion. Yeah. Um, why do I think she should be demoted? Yeah, um, that's what I'm asking. I, yeah, I'm not saying fired. I think she should have been demoted for her comments. I, I think that um, there has to be some, when you are in the public eye, and we're not talking like 20, 30 years ago. It was a while ago, but it was like three years. Like, it, it's, it, it was a bad look then. It's a bad look now. And the fact that she didn't know three years ago it was a bad look and, and didn't know until people started having to tell her, even when it was resurfaced initially, she would not apologize for it initially. She did like within a few days, but she didn't know it was bad. So I think you kind of have to take a step back and understand why it was bad. And then she can come back as a full-time housewife. But I think a, a demotion to a friend, dealing with it herself and kind of a little off screen and, and maybe becoming more and having that kind of redemption would have been great for her in the long term. Well, and I think too with Brandy was, uh, like we said earlier, it, it was just in pure comedy. I mean, she was just trying to be funny. It was very kind hearted. And that was the difference with Leanne was Leanne was just malicious and was doing it as an attack. <laughs> And Racism so, is never funny, though. No, and that's, well, I have I take an no, issue with the kind hearted. You can, hearted, use, it, like, you can that, use it. You can. You, it's how you direct it. And Leanne directed it as an attack. Whereas Brandy was just trying to be funny and kind hearted. Like I'm not I'm not saying it was right at all. As distasteful as it, it was. It, it was very distasteful. I, I think you different. mean she has a kind heart, not that her statements yeah. are kind hearted. But okay. It, yeah. But it's different when you're going at somebody and you know, calling Insulting them. Insulting them. Yeah. Exactly. And and Brandy was just trying to make people laugh and she just I, I mean if everybody had what I said on recording, I would be in jail. I, truthfully, I mean, they're in a different eye. And I think that goes for everybody here. And um, I just, I don't think she, I, I think it's great that she's still on and we got to see her grow. And, and she apologized and it was very, very sincere. Yeah, it wasn't it, fake tears. It wasn't crocodile tears like Leanne. Right. So it was, so, yeah, yeah, just tears in bad real. taste. And I, I think it served her right to deserve, you know, whether if she's back next season or not, it, she deserved the right to have a season of apology, basically. I, I do agree with you because when I saw like, uh, Leanne comment, what, what, when, when everything happened with Leanne, for example, you know, and she was directly at Carrie and the whole Mexican thing, you know, I'm, you know, I'm Latino, I'm from Colombia. So you can 
in in Leanne's, you can actually feel like the anger towards Carrie being Mexican. You know, it was like when when she thought, did all those comments about the Mexican. Oh, she's so strong. She should be Mexican. Oh, like you can feel the anger right there. And she never apologized. And then in that reunion, it was like so fake. Even when she tried to cry, it was like so fake. And I was like offended by it. I was like, yeah, this is bad, you know? While Brandy, it was completely distasteful. Yeah, it was bad, you know? And people got offended, but she actually apologized, you know, and moved forward. Now, I do think that she should have been punished somehow, but not fired. Maybe just like, like like Rachel said, maybe just demoted for you know this season and then come back next season or something like that. But um, yeah, that's what I think. I think it's harder for people in the good. public because you know um, we've all said things that were you know off color and distasteful, and but being in the public eye, they need to be more on their toes. That yeah, that be better. Everything. Yeah, and three or four that's years exactly. ago, I agree. I think she should have been. I think what you do for one, you kind of have to do for all, or it's just further discrimination, bigotry. You're just letting the stuff go. I mean, it's enough is a freaking enough already. People know right from wrong. If yeah. you got kids and you're telling your kids that's wrong and that's right. hot and that's I, right and that's okay, then you should know that making your eyes like another nationality on a screen in front of a million people when you're on a platform in front, is in front of wrong. her daughter. Yeah, I think that's where, where, that's where I had in front of her daughter. If you get consequences from it, right. if you get consequences from it, then that's up to you. The only thing is this whole time. So when did she do it? But, did she do but, it but since it she's was, been on the show? If she did it since she's been on the show, then bye bye You just used your platform to promote some stuff that you know is wrong. You would tell your kid it was wrong. So it's wrong. And whereas but, Stassi, Stassi, she did her stuff on her podcast too. On a podcast, that was wrong. Yeah. You don't get a platform to be nasty to people. You don't get no. one. Right. So, no, and, and but you, then we have the Real Housewife of Potomac lady, um, Candace, had some off-color tweets from ten years ago before she was on any platform. Now that is a completely, while it's still off-colored or whatever, and she knew it was wrong, she did not engage in that type of mentality while she was on this platform. But wasn't she, wasn't she Miss, Miss America? And please, I, I don't know all the titles correctly. Yeah, yeah. Please don't get me wrong. Wasn't uh, she Miss America to... or Miss whatever, USA, whatever yeah, she was? She was wasn't Miss she... America, but she wasn't on the Real oh. Housewives. But, so whatever. she used so, that platform if, still. Like you, if we're going to mm -hmm. do it, you got to say all, pla whenever no, you are in the pop class, all no. platforms. Because these I, ladies I specifically used Dallas. She used, while she was on in fandom, having fans from being on Dallas, she said this and engaged her fans in this thought. You see what I'm saying? Well, Whereas Candace, I, I agree, it's quick. 10 years ago, it was off camera. It wasn't nothing to do with Real Housewife of, Dal of Potomac timing. But, but like I said, represented. what you gotta do for one, you gotta do for all. Well, so but here's the thing though, is like you said, you know, it was 10 years ago but in a sense, you know, 10 years ago, she still was kind of holding a title in a way. Whereas you- Not on the show though. It, no, but, it, but no. she's holding a title. A national and, title. And it's, no. it, it's mm -hmm. no different than being no. a doctor. But it's it wasn't on this doctor. platform. It wasn't like a full on and, weekly okay. platform. Well, and we can it agree wasn't on a full weekly platform. But here's the thing also with Brandy is you're saying she had a platform three or four years ago. How big was that platform? It but was doesn't matter how big it was. It was still it it was how big it was. And it, it, happened, and it was out of crap. And she said it out of kind, like out of comedy, and it was in did poor she? taste. And so she, she would think her kids. It was, it was funny if her kids did that. If her kids did that, would she think it was funny? And she apologized immediately. She apologized immediately. And she was called out for it, though. That she well, she apologized it's immediately. It's so just hard to navigate like the double standards on Bravo it because it is. one one person's getting fired, one person's getting canceled, yet the other person is you know renewed for another Bravo's season. Fault. It it Our doesn't make any sense. Bravo, yeah. Yeah. We're I all think we might be yeah, more we're all exactly. being better humans. We really are, and we're all navigating these new waters, and we're yeah. trying to be better people. 
And yeah. so, well, so moving forward, you can't, say, you can't continue to, to you can't continue to crucify somebody for one small little minor thing. But but you can't I, I continue to make to it consistent. Ignorant. You can't continue to let people Bravo claim to make it ignorant with an right. entire history of slavery right. and with an entire like I mean countries are built on like oppressing other races. You can't pretend like well, you don't know that in but, 2020. Period. Well, period. Well, and you can excuse it away or whatever, yeah. but it's just a period. And why don't we do it from this moment on? Oh, no. and we, we, we all agree with you. And I think basically we could end this conversation with saying, would Brandy Redmond do something that ignorant again? Absolutely not. I think she yeah, would she her mistake. But she shouldn't have she the chance better. to. She shouldn't have the chance to if other people don't have the chance to either. Right. It should be consistent. They should make it like a rule. If and, you're a shit yeah. person, you get and canceled. Like, and like Storm Doris said, it, it's, and I think it's being a under contract with Bravo. It's not her. Like, yeah. like, it's if you're and under somebody contract, sends you a contract with for Bravo, Bravo, you would accept it. Even yeah, you do something that I mean, who would it? We all mm -hmm. Yeah, then perhaps Bravo. they should demote you or something like that. I think it should have to do with being under contract though. If you can't, if Bravo can't check you for something you didn't do under their watch. Right, so not if you're phone, under contract, contract with Bravo and you do some off colored stuff that you think is funny and not too offensive, but it is, then Bravo has to check you. But if you didn't do did. it under Bravo's umbrella, then they should not be able to check you. So I think you should go after Bravo, not Brandy. Bravo is the one being inconsistent. And they said yeah, her. Bravo is so inconsistent. Yeah. And that aspect, no, I agree. I think from here you forward, up, there you needs can stick to up be. And excuse away all of that all you want to. You can stick up for Brandy. You can stick I'm up for Leanne. For what she did, all you want to. Did. I'm not going after anybody. I'm just saying that if the contract should be the deciding factor, and that right. would make it easier for us as it, fans to decipher why Bravo is acting or why Bravo is not right. acting. And, and that's the term we should be using it. So you Bravo, can like whoever you like and I can. And yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's where I think Brandy, definitely you know, going forward, these contracts need to be yeah. key this, under all these rights because there us. is a double <laughs> standard in every franchise. There is a double standard with how yeah. people are being treated. And I mean, it's all in the news right now. And that is horrible PR for the brand of Bravo. So I think right. across the board, it needs to be level. I like the idea of if you're under the umbrella from here forward, this is what it is. You're given a platform, regardless of size, audience. Because you could be the most loved and have the most followers. You could be the most hated and have the least. But if from here forward you act X Y Z, it is bad. And as yeah. someone that is Native I, American, that would help me like that viewers. is what's crazy about America right yeah. now. And I think that Broadway that would help my should set that example. You know, that would help my blood pressure just as a viewer so that I'm yeah. not like, why they do that to Stasi? Why didn't they do that to Stasi? Exactly. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And the whole physical violence, like, 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 not condoning physical violence. Because we're already yeah. fast. What did Kanata say? What did, what did you say? Uh, not condoning physical violence. Yeah. Right. <laughs> When did that start? Right. Also? Yeah, that. Yeah. Like, figure it out, Bravo. Right. Right. Yeah, that. Well, guys, mute yourself, all of you. Let's move on. <laughs> Breathe, focus, get yourself together. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I love how passionate you are, guys, honestly. But you know what? That's the idea. Have a conversation. Put all your point of view out there because we we do not think all the same, but we should be able to communicate with each other at the end of the day, right? Okay, the next question is going to be Real Housewife of Dallas should show more of the lifestyle instead of the drama. No, I, I don't want them to be a new Beverly Hills where you know you have your glam squad going everywhere. I mean, that's crazy and done like Dallas, I think should actually show probably the more of the lifestyle of Dallas. I would love to see more charity events. I would love to go and watch them at charity. I don't know if the charity events would let them, but that would be amazing. And there's so many galas happening in Dallas too. 
So I definitely agree with that. I like just show us, and that goes across. We've said this a couple times in a couple different videos too, even that these cities need to make it more custom to that zip code, to that area. What makes it so special? Why would I personally want to get on a plane and go to Dallas? Show me the restaurant, where to go, where's date night, where are we going dancing, and where do I want to live? That's what I every love city needs to do. I love lifestyle porn. Like that's yes, why I watch <laughs> The Real Housewives. And yes. I think that with Cameron now, that's kind of why I like her on the show a lot because I'm yes. kind of seeing her lifestyle more. Yes. Uh, show us more. I would say show us I more. I love the aspiration on this, of it, especially right now with how the, like, the world is right now. Everyone is shut in, locked in. There are some people that financially are going through hard times. There's a lot. So I think with shows like this, if you can give people that mental escape, escape uh, yeah. and give them that aspiration Turn of like, on. one day that could be me or that's what I want to work towards. Give them that drive or that inspiration in these shows because they have the potential within the DNA of the shows to do that. Mm -hmm. And if they would take that angle, there's so much they could do. I also really love Cameron's aspiration to get a bigger house. Like her dream house cracks me up. I'm like, what's wrong with your house? Like that house is gorgeous. I told you, I she know. makes me want to learn how to walk my palms on a treadmill. She's like what? Right. Why? 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 Yeah, I'm here for all the lifestyle. Like I'm, I totally miss Robin Leach. Well, yes. 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 Yeah, that's so what like, these shows need for sure. Yeah, but without yeah. glam squads, no glam squads. Yes, because we all know what the glam squad glam squad routine is. Let's see that finished look. Let's see the before. <laughs> like that would yeah. be the transformation. Yes, let's do that. I think you should. I mean, I love a little mix of both, but I don't like when drama becomes that big. You know, when they are or literally dark. trying to uh, destroy another person's life, yes. that's when I'm like, mm, I don't want to see that, you know. That's why I'm actually enjoying this season. I, re I, I said it before, like, it, the drama is so light and it's so like, yes. oh, that's so stupid, but you enjoy it because it is that stupid, you know. And then you move on from that and you just continue. So I, I think it should be like a perfect balance between the lifestyle and also the drama. At the beginning, they show yeah. a lot of the Funny. lifestyle. You know, these huge houses, this, because in my mind, I have never been to Dallas either. So in my mind, I'm just thinking of like billionaires and huge mansions and Rolls Royces everywhere. So that's why I wanted to watch, you know, on, on the screen. I want to see a gala or five every, every season. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, mute yourself. Let's go. We have two more questions to go. The next one, oof, and I know a lot of you are going to want to talk about this, is Tiffany Moon is a great addition to the show. Yes. 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 I like Definitely. her. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. I like that she hid some crickets in the pizza. <laughs> I do, too. Because they yeah. did the same thing essentially with the hat season one with the dog poop. So it's like, and they, well, in Leanne's seat, they did that. So, I mean, granted, they weren't eating it, but I mean, and also what hasn't been revealed yet was, was that the like beginning stages of Brandy's pregnancy? And like, so she was just going to throw, like, she was oh. super just not She just anyway. over, she overreacted whether or not she's pregnant oh, yeah. or not. She, the yeah. full you could have poisoned me. Oh, it's a oh yeah, that yeah. was that was <laughs> there to throw up <laughs> for sure. But was, what I do I like, like Tiffany, I like that Tiffany's response when she said you could have poisoned me wasn't oh and you could have drowned me because they knew she couldn't swim exactly. when they threw her in the pool. So exactly. I love that she has a sense of humor. She's got a I love quick that wit. She knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she knows that she's a tight tight one and she knows she's wound up. She's willing to have fun. She's willing to like engage in things that she's never done before, but she's still about her culture and yes. trying to and trying to bring them in so it's not so foreign to them. So like, you know, they can she can educate her friends. These are her new friends. Mm -hmm. I felt like she was trying to like really help them learn her. But I, I also I mean? think I also think she did shame Cam though. She did. Um 
you know, she oh, with, the did, with the chicken feet, she really did. And I don't think she would appreciate it if somebody had done that to her. I think she took it too far. But that being said, that's the only criticism I have of her. Like, she took criticism of that. <laughs> that was weird. That whole chicken feet thing, that was weird. That was weird. That was weird. That well, once I found out how tried. much. Cam tried almost everything, but she's like, look, I'm not doing that. And if you've yeah. seen Cam and her weird food before, I thought she had done, like, gone out for her. You don't have to, like, be out for everybody. You know what I mean? Like, right. yeah. I think if she had sold it on the, this is how much collagen is in this bad boy, they all would have been <laughs> they devouring. They would be, like, licking their yeah. fingers. Especially yeah. with the skincare element. But one thing, it, Cameron doing, hiding the, the chicken feet under the table, like oh I God. once did that when I was like five or six at a restaurant. So that instantly, I'm like, <laughs> that surprised me that she did that. So I just wonder how long it took them to find that. It's funny. Right. Yeah, I like Tiffany. I think she's a good addition. But, but I do think, you think um, that she's gonna I'm sorry. meet well with, uh, because right now, I mean, I like Tiffany, you know, uh, the only thing that I think is that she's being too, you know, strict with everything and the rules and everything. And the other ladies are more like, let's do whatever we want. You know, let's get drunk. Let's do this. Let's do that. Well, she has you a job. <laughs> exactly. She has a real but, adult job. I mean, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, is that yeah. going to look well with the other ladies at the end of the day? You know? Well, the ones that aren't Except jealous. <laughs> I think you it takes a lot out for 1030. A because the one thing yeah. I actually did like that text about the 1030. I mean, I know some people didn't, but for me personally, what I liked is I've been in those situations where you've wanted someone to leave your house and I've had to invite someone over that I knew they didn't like just so that they would leave. And that, so I think her being upfront and like, okay, X, Y, Z, this is when it starts. This is when you leave. I kind of was with it because then I'm like, knowing Carrie and them, I would be like, okay, girls, after 10.30, where are we going? Like, yeah. pre-game. So I, it, it's so about perspective, but that, so. Well, to me, it was funny, because if it had been Atlanta, like, people would have been there for, like, 30 minutes, because everyone's always oh, late on that show. Like, they easily. never would have showed up on time. No one would have showed up on time. No. <laughs> and being from that area, no one, like, no, no. one's on time, ever. No. <laughs> and I like that Tiffany gets the hard stuff out of the way. She's like, this might be difficult to say, so I'm just going to do it first. And Let's just rip the bandaid off. Yes. Let's get it out there. And so you know what you're dealing with. There are no surprises with her. And it, while it seems like it might be boring, it's really refreshing. It because is Because you're right, the spontaneity of the other ladies and the lack of structure, you know, I like that she brings that. Yeah. And her kids are so cute. Her, her They're so yeah, cute. Twins. And her husband's so supportive. Yes. She said he was being emperor or something. They were, yeah. Last question of the day is, I am enjoying this season of The Real Housewives of Dallas. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm also liking seeing Cam out from under Leanne. Yes. I like. Yeah. I'm, oh. oh. This is who you really are. This oh, is no, you, back. huh? Wait. I like that. You know, because <laughs> I, I used to kind of feel like Cam was, um, it was like they were trying to like, you know, always build each other up or whatever. Yeah. And it was like they had their whole own little thing. But I'm liking that she's, even without Leanne, she just both feet in the pool and literally (laughs) so much i love the direction that she's going you know she's more open she's more like happier i don't know she she she's doing it a a great job i'm loving cam this season i love all of them i don't know honestly i do think i think this is uh, one of these seasons andy i totally agree that i actually like all the ladies and i think that's really rare in the franchises that i actually like each and every lady so the, I think they all mm-hmm. each bring something. The only thing I personally, and I said it earlier, that I would love to see is like bringing someone like Claudia Jordan, like give us those old school, like good reads, like her or Phaedra, like how they could do that. Someone that can read like that. Yeah. And yeah. probably about every franchise, sprinkle one of them. And <laughs> that's what it needs. 
Um, one thing though, who's Jen? Why is she on the show? She filmed as a full time, but because her husband would not let them have like permission, she got demoted to a friend of just like Sutton. Yes, but oh. Sutton's going to be a real housewife again. Like she's actually going to be a housewife this time, right? Is I she? Thought. I don't know. I thought. I thought. We can't is hear there room you. For her now with Kathy. We can't hear you. You're muted. We can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. you. Were you saying something? Yeah. yeah. I can't hear. It. No, no, you're gone. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take you out and put you back in. Yeah, but I'm really enjoying the season, and this was a great discussion so far. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. I wish I liked Carrie more. I will say Same. that. I wish I wish I liked Carrie more. She just is driving. I can't hear her complain anymore. I think that um, at some point when you complain about your position in life because you're a woman, as a woman, and as a woman who has a career, I take exception to that. Like, I don't care what you yeah. do with your life. Like, be anything you want to be, girl. Go be it. Go do it. But don't yes. complain that you're where you're at because you're a woman. Yeah. I don't right. want to hear it. Well, maybe, maybe if there was more of Carrie, there would be more of Carrie to like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. And that's all with love. That's with love. Yeah, she's not very deep. She's not deep. Right. No. Jace? Say something. Can y'all hear us now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was You're like, back. Like, nah. like, These people keep You're talking back. over me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, th this has been a really, really good season of Housewives. And like y'all said, we are seeing a whole different side of Cameron and, you know, Tiffany's being awesome. And we're witnessing Carrie kind of be jealous of uh, Tiffany and her friendship with Deandra. It's it's going to be a good season. It's much better than Orange County and, oh, yeah. and Beverly Hills. I didn't dislike Orange County as much as all of you people did. I'm just saying. I didn't dislike. I didn't it. dislike I think it. it. Was the first one. I boycotted COVID. I boycotted. I think they were because of Kelly. COVID. Because of Kelly. No, I love Kelly. Yeah, I was not here for nothing, Kelly. I did not watch. They didn't get not one of my views. Not one of them. <laughs> Because of Kelly Dodd, because of Kelly Dunn. <laughs> and I used to love her. I love how she used to go off on Heather and everything. But oh, she just went someplace and, yeah, so I didn't watch. When she called Heather the yeah. bro the C word, I fell in love with her. She lost all Yeah, me bro. too. <laughs> Because that was the one. She says what we think yeah. in our head. Like we would never yeah. say that out loud. And Kelly will get a glass of wine in her and say it. That's what I love about her. Yeah. But she also, but I, I, I can it. understand that how, with her social, what she's done on social media, how somebody would not want to watch the show because of that. Yeah, and I, oh, I can understand that. I can totally yeah. feel that. Zero filter. Zero. Yes. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> Zero filter. All right, guys. Well, that was the conversation for today. Thank you very much for being part of it. I'm going to go one by one. You can give me your final thoughts. And if you want to promote yourself, where can we find you? Wherever you want. OK, let's go. Let's start with SG. Any Hi. final thoughts? <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> you can follow my Instagram. Your Insta is SG, SG's Insta, right? Yeah, that's just how my name's written. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Uh, Larga. What's Larga? Larga. Yeah, Larga. Those are just my initials, yeah. people. And you can find me here on YouTube at Larger Curves, like it's spelled there. And um, I have a .com, largercurves.com, like it's spelled there. And I have TikTok, but that's at the Andersons, and that's where I found Andy in the first place. But I don't know. It's two Zs, the Anderson ZZ, like that. And this was fantastic. You guys are fantastic. I love that we were able to, like, pontificate Dallas housewives and share our different opinions. It's all love. And I really appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. And check us just out on our YouTube, people. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Andy.
Okay, peace. Let's see, Rachel. Well, it's been great. I've had um, a lot of fun. You can find me and um, you. my very good friend Erica was on um, the OC one as well. Um, we are at Parenting and Bravo. We've actually never met. We've COVID best friends, I guess you could call us. And we we fell in love over a mutual love of Bravo at a place we used to work together. And um, we started an Instagram. And I think this is going to be my first post on that Instagram page. And we are starting a podcast about how to uh, raise kids in the world of Bravo. Yeah. For example, my son, oh, and Chase, Chase, my son, so <laughs> funny great. today. It was it's last night. I was like, I just need a break. You need to go upstairs. He go, and he's looking at me goes, I got you, mom. He said into the remote. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, please. <laughs> <laughs> At least he was polite, but yes, that's yeah. <laughs> so it's awesome. And I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for having me. Bye. You're very welcome. Um, we'll see you around. Bye. All right, Jace, any final thoughts or where we can find you? Um, well, Jace Hudgens, that's my Instagram. This is Lana, Lana318 on Instagram. We follow each other. Um, but anyways, no, thank you so much for having us. Uh, clearly, we love Dallas. And we love Bravo, Real yeah. Housewives. I've raised him on it. I have videos of him. Um, yeah, when I when I was like nine or ten years old. He was Kim Zosia. I, I wore I, oh I wore a Batman cape. I want a Batman cape at this uh, at Six, Six Flags. Flags. And I turned it around and put it on as a dress. And I Alter dress. I, I I, just like Project I, Runway. I took a pen and pretended it was a cigarette and started oh singing Kim Zosia's song. Whoa. So, yeah. Um, I raised him on I, I, I This love is it. the most beautiful <laughs> result of raising your child on Bravo Real Housewives. But, thank you. We, yeah, we, we need to meet in person time. when I go there to Dallas, honestly. Oh, you my, have to let's take go me to, to all the best 31. places in Dallas. <laughs> Uh, let's all make it a date. For real, Andy. And, uh, it was thank so you nice for being part of this. On. And yeah. uh, if you want to be part of the other panels, I'll DM you. All right. Let me know. You have you have my Instagram. It was nice Perfect. to meet you. Bye. Bye. And last but not least, Storm. Always Any so much time? fun. I know. I right? always enjoy myself, and I. I mean, you always cast a great group. So, I mean, honest to God, Bravo Casting, y'all need to hit up Andy and he can help y'all with casting some great people. So, a little bit. Like you have Andy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but you can follow me on Insta, Storm Doors. Um, if you like fashion, accessories, beauty, skincare, uh, I'm a student studying all that fun stuff. So, just check it out. And thank you again, Andy, another. so much. I look forward to the oh, next one. You the next one. All right. Take care. You too. Bye. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for being part of this panel of Dallas. Next week, we are going to be going to our first city of the East Coast, and that's going to be Atlanta. And I know a lot of you are very excited to talk about Atlanta. So right now, if you are a big fan, Go send me an email right now to realandybh at gmail.com if you want to be part of the panel. And we'll go from there. It's going to be same next Thursday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to like this video as always. Share it. I don't know. Talk to everyone. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you around. See ya. Bye. How do I finish this? <laughs>